It's Tuesday, January 19. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The government plans to build 70,000 affordable housing solutions over the next five years. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the majority of the housing will be priced at $8 million or below. He says it's part of government's approach to decrease illegal settlements. The government is not going to countenance, sanction or have any sympathy on squatting and illegal settlements. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to increase the availability of housing solutions and lots so that people can have access to proper habitat legally and fairly. Mr. Holness was speaking at a title handover ceremony to landowners from Clarendon and Jewsland and Seaview Gardens in St. Andrew. The Jamaican government is seeking to strengthen operating protocols and procedures of the ship rider agreement between the United States and Jamaica, on which both countries cooperate to curtail illicit maritime drug trafficking. The matter was placed under the spotlight at the last sitting of the Senate. The move follows an incident in October 2020, where four Jamaican men aboard the Jamaican-registered vessel Lady Lala were detained by U.S. authorities. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, explains. We were advised that four Jamaican men were aboard the Jamaican-registered vessel when it was intercepted in October 2020, and its cargo inspected by the U.S. Coast Guard on the grounds of reasonable suspicion that the vessel was involved in illicit drug activities. Having tested and found that items aboard the vessel contained a type of narcotic drug or psychotropic substance, as provided for under the agreement, the four Jamaicans were transferred to and detained on the attending U.S. Coast Guard vessel, and the Lady Lala was destroyed on the grounds of representing a danger to navigation pursuant to the provisions of the agreement, the UN Convention Against Illicit Drugs and Psychotropic Substances, as well as standard maritime practice. Senator Johnson Smith says the U.S. requested a waiver of jurisdiction over the vessel, its cargo, and the persons aboard. It was granted with certain conditions. These were, one, that the persons would only be charged with offenses pursuant to the agreement and that the government of Jamaica would be advised of those charges. Two, that the general welfare, including the physical and mental health of the detained persons, would be ensured. That the, three, that the detained persons would be permitted, should they so desire, to make contact with Jamaican consular officials. And four, that the detained persons would have access to legal counsel in relation to any charges brought against them. She says the charges were eventually dismissed. On the 15th of December, the U.S. Southern District Court dismissed charges brought against the four Jamaican nationals on the grounds of lack of evidence. On the 28th of December, the ministry was made aware of the dismissal from media reports. The ministry immediately sought formal advice from the U.S. Embassy on the status of the case, and the U.S. Embassy subsequently confirmed the status of the matter and shared the relevant documents. Our attention immediately turned to ensuring that our nationals were returned home expeditiously. Having learned from our Consulate General in Miami that the four men were scheduled for repatriation on the 28th of January 2021 on the regular monthly flight for involuntary returnees, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade took immediate action through diplomatic communication with the U.S. Embassy to ensure the return of the four men to Jamaica no later than the 31st of December. Furthermore, we affirmed that in a context where the charges against the men had been dismissed, they should not be repatriated under order of deportation. In the interim, the Jamaican Consulate General in Miami was instructed by us to prepare emergency travel documents to facilitate their return to Jamaica. The U.S. authorities fully cooperated in respect of that request and the four nationals arrived in Jamaica early in the afternoon on the 31st of December 2020. Senator Johnson notes that although the Ship Rider Agreement is in place to fight crime, protection of the rights of Jamaicans abroad is a pillar of Jamaican foreign policy. She says in light of what occurred, improvements must be made to the agreement. One following boarding and search of intercepted vessels, and two, relating to the status of nationals from the time of grant of the waiver up to the outcome of any judicial 
legal or judicial action pursued against them, pursuant to the agreement. More particularly, the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and National Security and the Attorney General, supported by an interministerial technical team, met with a wide cross-section of senior U.S. officials on the 6th of January 2020 to further review the operational procedures associated with implementation of the agreement. The US, com U.S. delegation comprised the Ambassador of the United States to Jamaica and senior embassy officials, senior officials of the U.S. Coast Guard, as well as representatives of the Departments of Justice and State. Mr. President, I must underscore that the Jamaican government expressed in very clear terms certain steps key to bridging gaps in implementation as well as its strong disappointment at the recent developments, including the failure of the U.S. authorities to communicate critical information on the dismissal of the case as envisaged by the agreement. I'm pleased, however, to advise that the bilateral exchange was constructive and frank and undertaken in a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. Apologies were extended to the Jamaican side by the United States regarding the handling of the matter. Senator Johnson Smith says the U.S. should respond to the proposed improvements in three weeks. Time now for the latest COVID-19 update from the Health and Wellness Ministry. In the clinical summer for Monday, January 18, 145 new COVID-19 cases were reported. The total confirmed case now moves to 14,419, of which 2,179 are now active cases. Three new deaths were also recorded, pushing that total to 329. Of the recorded cases, Manchester registered 44, St. Catherine 21, Kingston and St. Andrew 20, St. Anne 15, Clarendon 14, St. James 12, St. Elizabeth 9, Portland 5, St. Mary and Westmoreland had two cases each and Hanover had one. The country also recorded 16 recoveries, bringing that total to 11,743. 108 persons are now hospitalized, with 24 showing moderate symptoms and 11 in critical condition. Melvin Pennant, PBCJ News. One car was crushed and two other vehicles were badly damaged after a trailer overturned along Harbour Street in downtown Kingston Monday afternoon. More from Marlon Samuels. Shortly before 2, Monday afternoon, a trailer reportedly failed to negotiate a turn in the road along Harbour Street in downtown Kingston. Due to the weight of the truck, it rolled over onto several parked vehicles. Two were totally destroyed. This man who was sitting in one of the parked vehicles narrowly escaped injury. Yeah, it was about to drive off. This? Mm -hmm. It was about to drive off. The way I panicked, I couldn't even do nothing. I just, you I just couldn't move. Yeah, yeah, I run, run out. out. No, you no, said my No, when it done, lick and everything would come out. I couldn't even look. I couldn't even run out. You didn't run the I could it start everything for me. I had me for the drive off and I couldn't move. Because I seen everything in them. Literally, I see the truck, see this. The truck rocked from the corner. Yeah, from the corner, it started. From the corner, around here, it started. It is still unclear what led to the accident. Brother, we never see nothing led from the barn. No, sir. Eyewitnesses say the driver seemingly failed to adjust his speed to the curve in the road. A study done on truck trailer accidents by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration notes that once the rolling starts, the driver no longer has control and the damage to anyone or anything in the way may be catastrophic. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. Ordained Anglican priest, playwright, radio and television broadcaster, author, actor and communications consultant Easton Lee has died. He was 89 years old. He died after a brief illness in Miramar, South Florida, where he resided. Mr. Lee is known for his outstanding pioneering work in broadcast media, first at the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC, and later at the Agency for Public Information, API, now known as Jamaica Information Service, GIS. Mr. Lee wrote, produced, and directed Jamaica's first original Jamaican teleplay called Paid in Full in 1965. However, he was best known for The Rope 
and the Cross, written in 1979. He has penned several other religious plays, including Once in a Manger, On the Third Day, and They That Mourn. Global oil prices are up. Gabriel Thompson gives us more details on these and other market news in the Business Report. In Monday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 1,349 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 93 stocks, of which 41 advanced, 36 declined, and 16 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 22 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services, Berger Paints Jamaica, and Blue Power Group Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica, AMG Packaging and Paper Company, and Barita Investments Limited. Trading firm were 1834 Investments Limited, CAC 2000 9.5% preference shares, and Cargo Handlers Limited. Tropical Battery Company Limited was the volume leader with 4.7 million units, followed by Proven Investments Limited USD with over 4 million units, and Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with 2.8 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Monday, January 18, ended trading at $144.97. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $113.53. The pound sterling traded for $198.26 and the euro ended trading at $176.81. Oil prices climbed on Tuesday as optimism that government stimulus will eventually lift global economic growth and oil demand trumped concerns that renewed COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns globally are cooling fuel consumption. Brent crude futures rose $0.72 cents to $55.47 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures gained $0.29 cents to $52.65 a barrel. And that does it for the Tuesday edition of the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. In regional news, though overall crime decreased by 16% last year, Crime statistics in the Bahamas reveal that the number of sexual offenses reported to the police in 2020 increased by 34%. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. Preliminary figures indicate that overall crime for the year 2020 decreased by 16%. Overall, Roll said crimes against a person decreased by 21%. There were 896 incidents in 2019 compared to 712 in 2020. As it relates to murders, there were 95 in 2019 compared to 73 homicides in 2020. This is the least amount of persons killed in a year in the Bahamas in 15 years. We have recorded a constant decline in homicide since we peaked in 2015 when we recorded 145 murders. The COP added that police investigated 213 sexual offenses incidents last year compared to 159 in 2019. That was up 34 percent compared to 2019. The cases include rape, unlawful sexual intercourse and attempted rape. Also up were suicides, which saw a 38 percent increase with 11 incidents as opposed to eight in 2019. We are at a disadvantage, though, because the people are, are dead. And so they don't tell us quite why they commit suicide. And in some cases, you know, we may, they may leave a note or family members may say that they were. The, what I can tell you is we had a few of those that we know were domestic related where, you know, the fellas are weak and they kill themselves because they were having issues with their, their females. I, I can leave that right there because, you know, to go further in that will require more research. Crimes against the property decreased by 15 percent. There were 4,128 reported incidents in 2019 compared to 3,519 in 2020. Armed robberies decreased by 41 percent with 313 incidents compared to 531 in 2019. Armed robberies occur mostly between the hours of 4 p.m. and 12 p.m. Armed robberies were more prevalent in the southeastern division, which accounted for 18 percent 
of the overall total. Roll said stolen vehicles decreased by 19 percent, stealing from vehicles decreased by 32 percent, and house break-ins decreased by 13 percent. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Disgruntled students and parents are taking the Caribbean Examination Council to court. We find out why in the support from Barbados today. Frustrated by the initial grading of last year's CSEC and CAPE examinations, and with the subsequent review process offered by the Regional Examinations Body, the group of concerned parents of Barbados has retained the services of one of the island's top legal firms to file a class action suit against CXC. They have hired Aegis Chambers after failing to reach what they say is an amicable and fair solution with CXC. It is with a profound sense of regret and sadness that the group of concerned parents of Barbados have concluded that we will proceed with our legal action against CXC with respect to the revised methodology exams of 2020 that resu resulted in erroneous grades being issued to hundreds of children in Barbados and thousands within the Caribbean. Three months later, the review process is virtually complete and very few of the grades meet current acceptable demands. Uh, we know that the children deserve better. They have earned better. In Trinidad and Tobago, Caesar's army headed by Carnival stakeholder Jules Sabion, plans to take entertainment a step further. They're about to embark on connecting thousands at home and abroad with a new virtual partying experience. The platform, which is expected to be released soon, makes available to all involved an entirely different level of partying. And as Crystal Wilson tells us, it also is designed to accommodate the needs of corporate Trinidad and Tobago. Where the Greater Antilles and Lesser Antilles meet as one, Caesar's Army welcomes those who crave the connection that comes with the ultimate fetting experience to join them for something the group considers to be on an entirely different level. It's called Antilia. How does it work? When a person signs up to join one of the group's advertised events, it all begins with the patron creating their very own avatar. Events production manager at Caesars Army, Renata Sanka, said after the avatar creation, the excited feta then gets to choose their location. So when you go in a spot, you say, okay, meet me by this coconut tree, or meet me on top of this cabana, and then you're, all your friends get together, and your friends could be anywhere. They could be in New York, they could be in the UK, in Barbados, and I could be in Trinidad, and I get to see everybody and talk to everybody, and it's just like, it's just like you're in the same spot, like normal, in a party, and you're enjoying the DJ music, or you're enjoying what the artist is singing, and you're there, and you're like, oh my gosh, and you're like, look at this avatar, the same way. Caesar's Army says the new virtual experience can accommodate as many people as partygoers are accustomed to. That puts it in the hundreds and even thousands of people at any point in time, depending on the event. Caesar's Army General Manager Darcel Kajem Roach says COVID-19, consideration of safety guidelines and embracing the new normal, brought about the idea for providing the next level virtual experience for members of the public. You know, you can't just be down about it and focus on the stress. People have to learn to adjust and recognize that the socially responsible thing to do is stay at home, be safe, but you can still find some means of enjoyment through these means, you know. It's not about just going back out as if it's back to normal. You can adjust the new normal, so to speak. So how does the prospective FETA access this platform? What they'll have to do is download the app on their computer. Um, if they have a headset, then better yet. There are certain headsets that work with the platform. So the platform is all space VR. And when they download the app, they will create an avatar, which I think is the most fun process. And then once we release the details for an event, they go onto Eventbrite and they register and then they end the dance on the day. Caesar's Army says Antelia is built on the All Space virtual platform and is also available for corporate entities as it can be used for media launches, board meetings and staff retreats. Crystal Wilson, TTD News. In sports, India came from seemingly impossible odds to hand Australia's first defeat at the GABA since 1988.
injury hit India chased 328 to win the series 2-1 with three overs to spare. This came after they were bowled out for 36 in losing the first test. And that's the news on PBCJ. Remember, we are the People's Station.